I think we all have these ideas about ourselves, that we're not sexist, that we're not racist. You're thinking, I'm a good person, I try hard not to make women uncomfortable. There's still these smaller, nuanced gestures that are still putting women at a disadvantage. It makes me feel good that young women have this attitude that, hey, we can go out and do anything we want. We are equal. All right, I think I'm ready. But the reality is, business-wise, it's not really true. If we want to be treated equally, we have to demand it. We have to ask for it or we have to go out and get it. When I moved to New York, I didn't really know that many people. The gym community, it's always provided kind of this home space for me with them climbing. When you see another climber, you feel connected to them. Because we're this tribe. Are you guys not climbing anymore? We're gonna do our thing. That's it? I had met a handful of strong women and it had really changed my relationship with climbing. Having a group of women to go out and climb with, to train with, to push each other, I felt it more intensely and felt more motivated. We started an Instagram called Flash Foxy, just to post pictures of me and my girlfriends. And then I started getting all these messages from ladies who climbed with their boyfriend and his friends and wanted climbing to be their own thing. We weren't professional athletes. We were just everyday people. And it's grown into women's climbing festival, where we have panels, clinics, and basically just women having a good time climbing together. This is our second year. Last year, we had about 200 people. This year, we have 300. We sold out in a minute. There's actually 805 people on the wait list. So I am so happy that you are all here, and I'm really excited to spend the weekend with you. If you're a group that's called Flash Foxy, you're asking for it. How can you have this like sexually playful tone, then be like, don't harass me? I think women don't have to be desexualized in order to be feminists. While climbing was what brought us together, it was sharing our lives together that made us so close. That really shifted climbing for me. It enriched it, and it made it deeper, and I felt much more connected to it than I had ever felt to any other sport. In the middle of this thing that you're clearly doing, and you should say thank you, because I'm trying to give you a compliment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, so I've had guys come up to me in the gym with frontal shoes and try to give me advice on a climb, like really genuinely. Yeah. And I, I feel like I have maybe gone about those interactions in the wrong way, which instead of explaining to them, right, <laughs> that it's like, <laughs> not <laughs> I get unwanted beta all the time. When it happens all the time, you start to possibly question yourself. Now you're asking for beta? No. Are you asking for beta? No. I want clearance. So we decided to do this survey. The survey was 28 questions. We got about 1,500 responses. The kind of questions that we ask, are there parts of the gym that you feel uncomfortable in? Have you seen or experienced aggressive harassment? And have you seen or experienced some of these more subtle gestures, like patronizing advice or staring? Outside online, we're interested in doing a short piece about our findings. There were a lot of people excited to see questions like this. And then on the other side, there was backlash. 
When feminism goes too far. I think you're over-exaggerating. Men are bad, talking to women is bad. Noticing you're making a problem where there isn't one. My friend that's a girl says she's never experienced this, so it must not be true. Women are completely impossible. They want you to look at them, but if you do look at them, you're in trouble. I know cool women, I can't be sexist. The brutally sexist and hostile environment of a climbing gym is too much for someone. Don't go to the climbing gym. That's fair. There are some other nastier ones too, but... <laughs> I'll be like, maybe they should just make their own women's climbing gym, and then they won't have those problems. <laughs> no. Check it out. Check it. Yeah. Check it out. Check it. Yeah. When I was asked to do this interview, I was like a little like, ooh, this is like kind of a t tough uh, subject. It's a little uncomfortable, you know what I mean? And it, and it it forces you to self reflect, you know, and be like, well, am I am I a sexist, you know? Because I don't want to be a sexist. I don't want to be that person. I can definitely em like empathize with a with a woman who's just getting into climbing. There's a lot of hierarchy and posturing and weird stuff maybe that goes on. I guess my wife's had that. She had like some dude like spraying her down, and, and you know, on this boulder problem, and then she flashed it, you know, and it was his project, and she's all, yeah, I don't really need beta on this V four. So, I mean, there's those guys out there. Yeah, should we put them Fair down then? Way, yeah, cool. Yeah. If they're not in it, we should just put them down. <laughs> You're, nice. You're a good boy. I can speak for myself and say that, you know, some of the most inspiring climbers that I know are women because they're good. So if this can lead to a point where women are more on an equal playing field, we're going to have more strong female heroes. One of the great things about climbing is that we have this like great moment where one of the most iconic climbs of all time was done first by a woman. Feeling empowered is something that you have to take. And as a woman, that's the lesson I think that we're learning. So a man is always trying to do the accomplishment and go after that accolade. And a woman is like, we like doing it. We're, we're feeling really good when we're climbing well. To be the first, it's like, it's just almost a, a secondary thought for us. So I knew I had this unique opportunity to go to Yosemite, one of the most famous climbing areas in the world, and do one of the most famous big wall climbs in the world and be a woman to do it first. I knew that that would wake people up and, and say, wow, a woman did that? and she did it before the men, people still to this day don't even realize. Oh, like she did, she was the first woman. No, 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 the first person. It's years and years of assumptions that people have, deep-seated, and they don't even know that they have those assumptions. I was an example, I got people's attention, doesn't mean that the battle is won. There's a series of questions I would ask. How important is this? What's the right way to approach it? And then, I think it's our duty to do the right thing. That's how change happens. The issues that we're talking about in climbing are just a microcosm of what happens in society. People's expectations of how you show up as a leader are defined by what they think a strong male leader is. If you look at most of the leadership teams, they're mostly men, they're mostly white men. There's so much research out there that people will look to someone who looks like them and give them the benefit of the doubt versus someone who maybe doesn't look like them would need to prove themselves. You go on a noon bike ride and the CEO goes, everyone's welcome to come along, but who can hang with the CEO who's usually a man? or the women who might have other responsibilities outside of work can't go on the ride because they have to get their work done in a really limited amount of time. The profiler, the silhouette, is employees get to the manager or the director level, and that's where we start to see a discrepancy between men advancing and women advancing. It's not necessarily saying, well, we have to have 50-50. It's just being respectful of individual choices and not saying that women have to adopt the same attitude as a man. As women start families, they that might not be what they want to do. I think we just have to have the opportunity. 
climbing is really important to a lot of us. It's our community. So if you're going to create change, it makes sense that you start in the places that you know. So on one side, it totally sucks to have strangers talking trash about you online. <laughs> But on the other hand, people are talking about it. When the article came out, like it, yeah, it did. It was a catalyst for me to talk with my boyfriend. It, it never occurred to me that he didn't think about the things that I thought about when I walk, when I walk into climbing situations. The hope like, is that it provides an outlet for women who maybe are thinking these things and haven't really had an ability to create a conversation out of it. I just get tired of being better than all the guys. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up as a self-proclaimed tomboy. It's something I've been thinking about a lot. I kind of want to rebel against that. Women don't have to be tomboys to want to run around and go outside and get beat up and dirty. And also, you don't even have to be this stereotype of being someone who's outdoorsy as a woman. We can embrace beauty and our playfulness and our sexuality without being objectified. I think that it's about women's rights, but this also includes the rights of other marginalized groups. I want to open up these conversations in climbing where we can make concrete change that will affect everybody on a larger scale.